If you're a video editor, you need to know about these seven websites. It's going to save you a lot of time, money, stress, and make your work a lot easier. Let's get started. Number one is called Pexels.com. It's a website with free B-roll. You have both photos and videos here. You can search for anything you want, both in photos and videos. Just hover over the video to preview it, to download, press on download, and it's ready to use. In terms of licensing, we can come into the top right corner to see the licensing. As you can see here, all photos and videos are free to use. No attribution is required. You can modify all the photos and videos, be creative and edit them as you like. Usually I use paid services, which we're going to talk about in a second, but sometimes I do come to this website because it has a lot of great footage. So if you're on a budget or you're looking for extra footage, the link will be in the description below. The second website is also free and it allows you to download unlimited YouTube videos. So let's say I like a video of Mr. Beast. I come to the URL, after the dot and before YouTube, I put SS. I press enter. So here I can select the format that I need. If you want a format within audio, it's going to be a worse quality. But if you want a really good quality of the video, you download the one without an audio, as you can see here. Then you download the one with audio. You can combine it in the editing software and there you go. It works better in Chrome simply because if you are trying to save it in MP4 in good quality, you are unable to save it. Safari doesn't allow to download it for some reason. So it usually works best to download MP4 in 360, although sometimes it still has a few problems in Safari. But if you go to Chrome, do the same thing, press SS after dot and between YouTube, I can download any format without a problem. Top bottom, download, and as you can see, it started downloading. At number three, we have Artlist, Motion Array, and Envato Elements. These websites are not free, but they allow a good variety of everything for editors. In Artlist, we have music. Even before creating an account, you can come to this website, listen to the music, take a look at the footage, and see if you like it or not. So you can preview the music, you can come into footage, see the footage that you like. You can also come into templates, select which editing software you use, search for what you need and use it. The same with Motion Array. You have your footage here, you have your music and you have your templates, your graphics. And the same with Envato. You have your B-roll, although why do we have something like this on this website? Interesting. We have music, sound effects, graphic templates and a lot more. Personally, I've used Motion Ray for my own videos and I use Envato Elements for my clients. Artlist is a good website as well. I know it has a lot of good music for like orchestral music. So the one we heard here in the beginning, this one. Hayden Hiller Smith uses Artlist to edit his videos and videos for his clients. So all of these websites are like at eight or nine out of 10. There's not much difference between them. Just take a look at which one you visually like the most and choose it. The next website we have is called Adobe Podcast. You might have seen Colin and Samir use it. Number two, Adobe Podcast. So right now, this is just the phone microphone. But using Adobe Podcast, it'll enhance the audio and make it sound like I'm actually in a studio. Even if someone is vacuuming right behind you, it's truly incredible. So what you do is you upload audio to the website, Adobe Podcast enhances it, it deletes all the background noise, and then it enhances your voice so that it sounds like it's on a podcast. In order to do that, you need to enhance speech, come here, upload a video, you can create a free account, and with free account, you do have a little bit of limitations, but you can still use this one. So you have 30 minutes maximum duration of one audio clip. You have a maximum of one hour per day and file size 500 megabytes. However, if you use Premiere Pro, you actually have this feature built into the software. So if I open Premiere, I open a project, I select the audio files, just the audio without the music. Then I come into the workspace of audio in the top right corner, as you can see here, audio, and then enhance speech, this one. So you press on hands. Originally you have seven here and seven is the same effect that you get in the Adobe podcast. Although in my opinion, seven is a little bit too much. So I like to put it at three to five. It's a lot easier to do it here, but if you don't use Premiere Pro, then you can always come to Adobe podcast and use this feature here. The next website is called Epidemic Sound. It's specifically designed to work with audio. So you have music and sound effects here. So if you go into the music tab, you can see we have different genres, we have different moods, 
Usually when I edit, I like to work with moods. If I want the video to feel energetic, I will use energetic music. If I want the video to feel sad, I will use a sad music. Why don't we look at epic music? Let's play it. I feel like this would be a very good intro to some sort of travel or cinematic video. So I think Peter McKinnon, definitely not Mr. Beast, maybe Yes Theory. Then we can come into the sound effects. And at first we see all the effects that they have here, kind of sorted out so that it's easier for you to find what you're looking for. But you can also search for what you're looking for. So we can search for a lamp, for instance. Let's see what we have. like a switch on off that's actually kind of what i was looking for so you have a lot of different options here once again you can come in here see how much water you have here view more you can go on forever a lot of different sound effects i've been using epidemic sound for the last five years and you can get a free trial if you use a link in the description the next website we have is called frame.io it's a great website if you have a client and you work as a video editor because what you can do is you can upload a file to frame.io click on share share for review copy the link and send it to your client. Your client will be able to access the video and leave comments at specific times of the video. And then whenever you click on one of the comments, it directs you to exactly that timestamp so that you know where you need to change and what you need to change. It's the most efficient way in terms of communicating and editing, making changes in the project. So this is something I recommend. This is something I use almost every single day. So if you have a client, definitely look into this. And the last website we have is if you want to work as a video editor, but you don't have any clients or you want to find new clients. And it's a website called YT Jobs. This is a website for you to find talent or to find clients. What do you need is you need to come to YT Jobs. Once again, link will be in the description. Register with your Google account, allow access to your YouTube channel. And you do need to have at least six videos in order to access this website. Once you confirm that you have six videos, you need to come to your profile in top right corner, click on your name, go to portfolio, and then add videos of your channel, of your client's channels, go through your profile, fill in as much information as possible, put a picture on your profile, put this little picture here, fill in your profile as much as possible. That's gonna help a creator or a channel to know if you are the right fit or if you are not the right fit. After that, you can go into jobs, click here, you go to categories. If you're a video editor, click on video editor, but you have other options here. So click on video editor, click on a job, read through this, want to hire a full-time video editor for my channel. They have example videos, take a look at the example videos. If you like, you can apply, send them a DM, send them a couple of your previous projects. Not everyone gets back, that's just a part of live, not everyone gets back. Some of the channels will get back to you, some of the companies will get back to you, then you'll have a communication with them, you'll probably do a test project, some of them do it paid, some of them do it for free, and after that, you will have a client. Now, if you want to see an in-depth review of this platform, click on this video here, I recommend you watching it. This is how I found my first client and this is how you can find your first client too. So click here.